Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna bring you another poem of Tao Yuanming's, and this is one of my favorite poems of all time. It's called Returning to the Fields, translated by Arthur Willey. When I was young, I was out of tune with the herd. My only love was for the hills and mountains. Unwitting, I fell into the web of the world's dust and was not free until my thirtieth year. The migrant bird longs for the old wood. The fish in the tank thinks of its native pool. I had rescued from wildness a patch of the southern moor, and still rustic, I returned to field and garden. My ground covers no more than ten acres. My thatched cottage has eight or nine rooms. Elms and willows cluster by the eaves. Peach trees and plum trees grow before the hall. Hazy, hazy, the distant hamlets of men. Steady, the smoke of the half-deserted village. A dog barks somewhere in the deep lanes. A cock crows at the top of the mulberry tree. At gate and courtyard, no murmur of the world's dust. In the empty rooms, leisure and deep stillness. Long I lived, checked by the bars of a cage. Now I have turned again to nature and freedom. Now the original Chinese text. 少无世俗韵，性本爱秋山。物落尘网中，已去三十年。鸡鸟恋旧林，池鱼思故渊。开荒难野迹，手捉归园田。方宅十余亩。草屋八九间，榆柳映后檐，桃李罗堂前。爱爱远人村，依依虚里烟。狗吠深巷中，鸡鸣桑树巅。户庭无尘杂，虚室有余闲。久在樊笼里，复得反自然。First of all, I really like. The translation of this poem is not translated by a Chinese master.、Um, Xu Yuanchong is translated by a foreigner, an、um, na English native speaker. So it's more approachable. Or the words that he uses, although it doesn't always rhyme, but the words that he uses are so comprehensible. So I hope that you enjoy this translated version as well. So this poem is the first poem of a series. Uh, sharing the title "Returning to the Fields," the whole series was trying to deliver Tao Yuanming's determination to quit his work in the government and to become a farmer. The joy of returning to nature, to socialize with ordinary farmers, and to have the most humble farming experiences—all of these elements have made this series of poems the brilliant representation of this so-called field and garden poetry, as I introduced before. For. And this poem has a story behind the scenes. So Tao Yuanming started working in the government from the age of 29.、Um, he is actually from a very famous family. His grandfather used to be a very famous general in the court.、Um, but when Tao Yuanming grew up, his family was already pretty poor. So he has quit his job many times after becoming a government official.、Uh, but since he was not living an abundant life, so he had to pick up working a. Again and again,、uh, until the age of 41, when he was the head of a county, and he finally decided to completely say goodbye to this kind of life and turned to farming. This is quite understandable if you combine the historical background of the so-called Southern and Northern dynasties, as I have explained in previous videos that. Was a very dark age for every Chinese, and even if you worked for the government back then, it didn't mean you could be better off than the ordinary people. And at the same time, you would have to deal with the corrupt and exploitive politics. So returning to farming was a tough but very comprehensible decision at that time. You could tell from this poem that becoming a farmer is not something. Ambitious. It is not because of fame or wealth.、Uh, in fact, Tao Yuanming was not famous at all back in his days. 
He didn't become famous until hundreds of years later. But in this poem, the idyllic scenery, the warm atmosphere of the countryside, all serve as unrejectable reasons for Tao Yuanming's returning. The beginning sentences always touch me every time I read it. When I was young, I was out of tune with the herd. My only love was for the hills and mountains. Unwitting, I fell into the web of the world's dust and was not free until my thirtieth year. I feel that every introvert person can relate to these sentences.、Um, I believe these lines are still applicable to a large proportion of the population today because living in the modern world, we're kind of obliged to comply. To a certain style of living and working, even more so than ancient people back then, and the courage and the will of becoming a farmer is still pursued by many people today. I especially like this line. Of the migrant bird longs for the old wood, the fish in the tank thinks of its native pool. It reveals that the love of nature is something that humans would naturally pursue. It is not to be taken as Simply hiding away from the reality, from the troubles, but more like a behavior to return to our true self and be honest with ourselves. As you can probably tell by now, the Chinese poets like to use analogies a lot by comparing the human world with nature. And the last sentence: "Long I lived, checked by the bars of a cage. Now I have turned again to nature and freedom." Corresponds with the comparison by mentioning the bars of a cage. In the line of "At gate and courtyard, no murmur of the world's dust. In the empty rooms, leisure and deep stillness." We see that the poet used the word dust. I'm not sure where this is from, but in the latter Buddhist Zen, this word dust, or in Chinese Chen, is often used to refer to worries that we feel. Given that Tao Yuanming lived in a time where Buddhism started to get popular in China, the fact that some Buddhist saw words are being used in his poems is also a very interesting subject. So every time I read this poem, I get touched and get this impulse to go into nature and rethink about my life and the dreams that I have. But I always postpone to realize.、Um, I'm not encouraging anyone to go back to farming or becoming a hermit, but definitely the style of this poem just fits so well, and I guess can be a healing power to a lot of people feeling anxious these days.、Um, in light of in Uncertain future, so I hope you enjoy this poem as much as I do. And as usual, please comment down below if you have feelings to share. And I'll see you next time.